Tripods. Love them or hate them, they are an essential piece of gear in every landscape photographer's toolkit. I already own a tripod that I like, uh, that I use for pretty much all of my landscape photography work. And that tripod is a Benro Mach 3 carbon fiber uh, extra tall tripod. I bought it an extra tall because I'm an extra tall guy. I'm about six foot four. And so having the ability to get the tripod up to eye level and even taller than me is actually really helpful. It's also a very uh, solid, large tripod um, that really helps you out with stability when shooting in inclement weather. For example, if you know I'm doing photography in a windy environment like Iceland or, um, or like earlier this year when I was in Lofoten, Norway and I was doing a sunrise shoot in a fjord and this hail storm came in, I was able to keep shooting when all of that hail was coming down and blowing the tripod and, uh, and it performed really, really well. The truth though is that there are more situations where I'm shooting in mild uh, weather, where there's no wind, there's no hail, and having a large heavy tripod like that is frankly just a little overkill. It's also just a very cumbersome tripod to be uh, backpacking with. A lot of times I end up carrying it in my hands because it just, it just is not well suited to be attached to a backpack. Okay, so all of that is what led me to checking out this new tripod. This is a Gazelle TC6 carbon fiber travel tripod from iFootage. How's it going everyone? I'm Todd Domini. I make videos about landscape photography and gear. And again, today I'm talking about the Gazelle TC6. So here's some basic information for you about this tripod. First thing to know, the Gazelle TC6 can get up to a maximum height of 65 inches or 1.65 meters. And that's with both legs fully extended and with the center column uh, pulled all the way up. Unfortunately, that makes the tripod just a little too big for carry-on luggage. You would have to put it in uh, checked luggage if you were to be traveling uh, by air with this tripod. The minimum height of this tripod is 7.6 inches or 19 centimeters. And what that refers to is how low can you uh, get the tripod down on the ground uh, with your camera to be getting low shots. And that's uh, measured from the ground up to the top of the base here. So I'm going to be talking a little bit more about that minimum height in just a minute because it's one of the unique features of this tripod. The weight of this tripod is 4.2 pounds or 1.9 kilograms. Not the lightest carbon fiber tripod out there at this uh, size or this height. Uh, you could spend more money if you wanted to shave like uh, a little bit of weight off of it. But in general, that's a pretty reasonable weight uh, for the price of this tripod, I think at least. The maximum amount of weight that this tripod can handle, how much you can put on top is 17.6 pounds or eight kilograms. And in my opinion, that is perfectly reasonable. If you are shooting with a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, and even if you have like a really heavy telephoto lens, that brings your maximum weight to somewhere in the neighborhood of like eight pounds, nine pounds, which is well within uh, the maximum load of this tripod. As for price, the Gazelle TC6 at the time of this video retails in the United States through Amazon where I bought it for $300. And I'll talk a little bit more later about whether I think it's worth $300, but in general, that places this tripod somewhere in between like a budget tripod and some of the more expensive carbon fiber travel tripods that you can find. So I have to say that this is the kind of thing, you know, talking about you know, new features that I, I don't know, I get kind of excited about in a nerdy way because outside of photography, my professional career uh, was in uh, you know, product design, brand design, and uh, user experience. And this was all in the uh, digital software tech space. And what you learn when you work in that industry is the fact that you know, in order to develop products and to implement features that users love, the first step is you know, to understand who your target audience is, right? And then you need to understand, you know, what their uh, needs are, what it is they're trying to accomplish. And then once you understand that, you're able to implement products and features utilizing both design and engineering and bringing the two together so that you're providing solutions that aren't just 
uh, useful and functional and dependable and things like that on the engineering side. But on the design side, they're also beautiful and they provide a good user experience and the user feels empowered using them and, and perhaps even they uh, enjoy using them, if you could even go that far. By bringing the two together and you know implementing features and products that way, you come up with something that is way smarter than uh, the competition, than things that other people are making for the same target audience. So that is a very long-winded explanation to talk about special features. Because when I look at some of the things that have gone into the Gazelle TC6, I mean, those are the things that go through my mind. And so I'd like to point out some things on this tripod that I think are very smart and really well designed and engineered. Okay, so the first feature is the feet. Now the feet down here at the bottom of a tripod, I mean, this is typically not the kind of place where you see uh, innovation happening with a product. I mean, feet on a tripod have been pretty much the same for, you know, forever, for as long as you can remember, right? I mean, you have rubber feet or you have uh, metal spikes like these. Now you would use metal spikes like these if you were, um, you know, setting up the tripod in snow or ice or some type of uh, terrain where you needed to kind of dig the tripod down into the ground a little bit for uh, stability. So what iFootage did here, I think is really clever and smart. They took the rubber foot and the metal spike and they combined the two of them together so that you always have an option of either one. There's, there's nothing for you to take off and replace. By default, these have the, the rubber feet all the way out so that uh, you're, you're able to use that. But if you need to switch over to metal spikes, you just turn these rubber feet in. And when you do that, then you get metal spikes on the bottom of the tripod legs. And when you're done, then you can just wheel these back out again. I just think it's really smart and clever. The only potential downside that I do see though is that the screws down here, which I hope are stainless steel, um, they are exposed to the elements. So you may, you know, get some sand or some grit in here, especially because the tripod is going down into the ground. Hopefully these won't rust out either. I'd also be interested to know if, you know, by moving this tripod around, by, you know, pulling it in and out of a car or whatever, if there would be problems with these rubber feet uh, screwing into the bottom of the leg a little bit, you know, something, something like that, where it's kind of like partially in, so you have a spike, but then these other ones here are flat, and so then it might not be uh, level, unlike a foot, which is just screwed all the way in. I don't know, I mean, I'm gonna have to test that. I'm gonna have to take this out and uh, give it a try and kind of bang it around a little bit and see if that's really a problem. But right now, I just think it's a smart solution. All right, next let's talk about the center column. So yeah, this thing has a center column, but the nice thing is, is that for those of you out there who hate center columns, because uh, sometimes I do as well, it's super easy to take out, which actually removes some of the weight from the tripod too, if you're trying to conserve weight. You just uh, un unlock this uh, little uh, kind of like a dial down here at the bottom of the center column, and then you just pull it right out. And that doesn't change anything up here at the top. This is all still locked in, so nothing is gonna fall off uh, the top or anything like that. The center column down here at the bottom has a hook, and you can use this hook to be hanging your camera bag or some other type of weight to help give this, the tripod a little extra stability. So the hook looks nice. It's uh, made of thick uh, plastic and it's pretty well integrated into the bottom of the uh, column here. So yeah, it looks like it, it should be able to hold uh, a fair amount of weight. Okay, the next feature is right up here at the top at the collar of the tripod. There's a really nice uh, 3 8 of an inch uh, female thread up here at the top. And this is like just integrated right into the metal of the um, of this collar on the tripod. And that's really nice because uh, if you are a videographer using this in a studio and you want to attach an arm with a, a monitor or you know some type of accessory, then uh, this is a very convenient little uh, place for you to be attaching that. Next I want to talk about one of the main reasons why I picked up this Gazelle TC6 and that is this base. This base is not a static base. This isn't like just a basic thing that you attach a ball head or a fluid head to. This base is actually, it doubles as a leveling base. So all you have to do, you'll see this large red collar 
uh, up here at the top. You just loosen this up, you unlock it, and when you do that, you're able to rotate this base. And I would guess that it probably tilts at about a, I don't know, maybe a 15 to 20 degree angle, which is uh, sufficient and more than enough for what it is that you're trying to do. And uh, the thing that you're trying to do is level your camera independent of the tripod. And what this allows you to do is independently level your camera up here at the top without messing with your tripod legs. Because before, if you don't have any kind of leveling mechanism up here at the top, then you have to keep an eye on the bubble level up here at the top of your tripod. Then you have to do things like raise and lower the legs and you know, like raise and lower this one and then maybe this one over here and then this one and then constantly stand up and look at the bubble and see if you're level or not. It is such a pain. I have done it so many times that, I mean, I, I finally uh, caved in, especially when I found out that these were available and I picked up one of these for uh, photography on my other tripod. But with the iFootage Gazelle TC6, it is built in, which is really, really cool. Okay, so earlier in the video, I was talking about the minimum height of the tripod and getting the tripod down low to the ground. And I talked about how I was going to talk about more uh, about that later. So as you know, with you know any other tripod, the way to get a tripod low into the ground, well, the first step is to remove the center column. And then the next thing you do is that, you know, up here at the top of the legs is this uh, lock up here. And, you know, typically what you do is you just pull the lock up and then you're able to push the leg all the way up into a near upright position. And then you go around and you do that on all the other legs. Let's see if I can do this without knocking something over. If you've ever, you know, drop your tripod down this low before, then you're probably familiar with the fact that, you know, when you're done and you are ready to, you know, start hiking and moving or maybe do some other types of images, you have to stand the tripod back up again and bring it back to its default state, right? So what you typically have to do is you have to push the leg down and then remember to push this buckle, this lock up here, you have to push this back in and lock it back into place so that the next time you open the legs and use the tripod, the leg just doesn't go all the way up. Well, what iFootage did here is really pretty clever. On the shoulders up here at the top of the legs, there's this little stair step kind of uh, groove that they cut into the uh, metal up here. And the way this works is that, you know, you unlock the leg just like you would any other tripod leg. You push it all the way up and then it automatically locks into this top uh, stair step up here at the top of the collar and then as you push the leg down and I'll be quiet so that you can hear this it slowly locks back into place but the cool thing is is that when you push the legs back down and then you lift them back up again they're locked and they're back in their default position again so you can immediately use the tripod again as you normally would <laughs> I really like those locks I think those are I think those are really cool all right, the next feature I want to talk about are the buckles on the legs. Now, these buckles are very distinctive for the iFootage brand. I mean, they're bright red. And to be honest, if I had the option of getting this uh, without the bright red and maybe in like a gray or a black, I, I honestly would prefer that. But I get it and I understand why, they're, uh, why they do this from a, a product design and brand design perspective. But the beautiful thing about these buckles is that they are so nice to use compared to like, you know, the screws or the little like flip tabs or whatever you want to call them. These are so well engineered. I mean, all you do is just, you know, lift these tabs up, the legs extend easily, slide back in. And also I want to point out that they put these just little rubber rings here on the legs so that you know, unlike most tripods, which when you close them, they just go like clank, clank, and they just make all kinds of noise. This is just really soft and uh, quiet. So with these buckles, the thing that I really like is, you know, not only are they you know, super strong when you lock them down. I mean, you, you can't, I'm not the strongest person in the world, but you get my point. I mean, they are super strong. You can't get that back in. And 
despite how strong they are, they are really easy to unlock. You just, you know, lift it right back up and you're good to go. The thing that's great too is that the width of these and the amount of grip that you have on these levers is, is there's a lot of uh, real estate here for you to be grabbing onto, which uh, would be very helpful, I would think, if you were out shooting in a winter landscape and wearing heavy gloves, any kind of small little fiddly thing is just not going to be very comfortable to use when you have those thick heavy gloves on. But these are just so easy and, um, and I think they would be great. Another little interesting thing here that's kind of hidden, you almost miss it, but uh, on one of the legs you'll notice this little bit of plastic right up here that's kind of sticking into this, uh, this hex screw right here. Uh, this is actually um, a convenient little screwdriver. You just pull it off and this actually helps you tighten up these uh, levers, you know, should they you know, get loose when you're out in the field. So the next thing I wanna talk about is attaching a ball head or a fluid head to this tripod. Now, in case it's not already obvious, uh, this tripod does not come with any kind of ball head or fluid head. You have to bring your own. So for the uh, aforementioned 300 bucks, you're just buying the legs and the base. You have to bring your own. So um, iFootage does sell uh, its own fluid head if that's of interest to you, if you don't already own one. But I actually already have one. And this is a uh, Manfrotto MVH500. AH, <laughs> I think is what it is. Whatever it is, I'll link to it below. The cool thing is, is, well, let me just show you. I'll check this out. The diameter of the bottom of this Manfrotto head is almost exactly the same as the iFootage base. It looks like it was made to go with this tripod. What's also kind of funny is the fact that uh, iFootage seems to have kind of adopted Manfrotto's color scheme for their brand, this you know, kind of like deep red color, because this Manfrotto uh, detailing here on the fluid video head perfectly matches the detailing on the eye footage. So, I mean, it looks like the two were uh, made by the same company. Oh, so I realized after I was done editing this video and I was about to upload it, that there was one more thing about this tripod, the Gazelle TC6 that I, forgot to mention. And so I came back down, I turned on the lights and all right, so here we go. So it is about this, the bag. Yes, the bag, quite possibly the most boring part of every tripod purchase because every tripod comes with one of these, right? But what happens if you are like most people and you have a ball head or a fluid video head or something attached to the tripod? A lot of times you don't take these things off, right? Well, here's the problem. You come back and you realize that it doesn't fit. It's too big. So what's the solution? Uh, a bigger bag? Well, you're right. Here's the clever thing. On the inside of this bag is this Velcro uh, tab and it all blends together like it's all the same color so you don't notice it at first but you just undo this velcro here put your hand inside the bag and then you push up and this extends the bag and adds like about six inches or so to it so with that extended how about that fluid head goes in the tripod goes in and you still have a little bit of extra space in there as well. If you need to put something else in there, that's it. And you can still use the bag, even with something mounted on the top of the tripod. Pretty cool. So is it a $300 tripod? Is the Gazelle TC6 worth the money? I would have to say, I think it probably is. I am one of those people that feels like tripods are a little more expensive than they probably should be, but you know, that's just my opinion. But relative to what else is out there on the market and how much other tripods cost and what you're getting feature-wise for the money with this tripod, I think for $300, it makes sense. And it's definitely worth checking out if you're in the market for a carbon fiber travel tripod. So do you own the Gazelle TC6? If so, do you like using it? 
Or do you own a different tripod, maybe a different tripod from iFootage or something similar to this that you think is uh, just as good and perhaps worth checking out? Please leave a comment below and share your opinion, share your thoughts, uh, not, not just with me, but with anyone else that happens to come across this video, anyone else that is subscribing to this channel. It's your contribution which makes uh, every video uh, better and more uh, valuable and educational for other people who happen to stumble across my channel and uh, see this review. So by all means, don't be shy and uh, leave a comment below. And by the way, if you haven't done so already, I encourage you to please subscribe to this channel. I'm posting a video just about every week about landscape photography and gear. I've been mostly doing gear uh, types of videos lately, but pretty soon I'm going to be hitting the road with a friend of mine going out to Death Valley in California. And so I'm going to be doing some vlogging out there, shooting a lot of video content, I expect. So um, yeah, so there's uh, some good things coming. If you want to be notified when something goes live, there's a little bell icon next to, this, to the uh, subscribe button. You just tap on that and you will be notified on your mobile device and your web browser uh, and by email whenever something new goes live. So yeah, so there's that if you want up to the minute. Uh, notifications. And by the way, all the products that I mentioned in today's video, including the Gazelle TC6, are linked below in the show notes. They link over to Amazon because I am an Amazon affiliate, so I do earn just a little bit of money from uh, anything that is purchased through Amazon using one of those links. Of course, it doesn't cost you anything more. It just helps support this channel and the content that I'm creating for it. Okay, that should do it. Thanks so much for being here. I will see you next time. Hey guys, back with another video. Today, we are going to be reviewing this tripod. Let's extend it, and it has these little things, like these little clips. So if I unclip it, and it, 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 yeah. So when you're taking photos, always unclip it. But you're able to get this, and look. Whenever you're bored in the middle of the desert while taking photos, you're able to just spin this, and just stare at it. <laughs> Because there's literally nothing else to do. Look how high it's able to go. Gah! <laughs> Look how tall this thing is. It's taller than me. No, it's not. I'm still mega tall. Okay. It's humongous.